like it's the yeah. website is down or something. Oh, so it's called the best day. He's called me too. Yeah, Because when they when they put it on how round like it's gonna be this week tune in yeah and then they're falling down on their end um I don't know it doesn't matter yeah. what can we do you I'm know asking if, if we wanted to just like yeah. oh can we do that I mean it rec yeah it's recording on it so we could just record it so that would be good that, that would be great oh great okay okay well, I know it's not on this end I know it's something in the yeah in the ether in the thing that I don't understand and that. Oh, no, no, no. We know you're on top of it. It's a um, nice camera, by the way. It's not a nice camera? Oh, really? It's big. It's an older model. It's a big camera. When it's big, I assume. Not the first time, but a girl has been thinking. So, yeah, just so for the end of the your creative process, what's going on with you, 
and as everybody knows, he's done this before. If you make it about me, I'll make it about you. So, are you guys doing Because I just, I want, you know, I want to make sure I'm looking at you and you're like, don't look at me. Like, hey, I'm, we're trying to do something else. Okay. You can, you're welcome to, if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Senku, he's a, a wonderful actor, um, and he's uh, off to other things. He's doing other things. So, yeah. Oh, Shabbat! Hi! I said that because I just saw this person about an hour ago. <laughs> I promise not to repeat anything that I said in class today. Because <laughs> it was laden with four-letter words. And gestures. And gestures. That were appropriate for the moment. Okay, so we're going to work for 20 minutes and then we're going to talk about your writing. So uh, Molly's here to help us out today. Yay. And uh, we're going to use our timers. I forgot my own timer, so we'll just use our... Our crack pipes. I'm sorry, our phones. <laughs> oh, all right, let's go.
cope with or deal with uh, working with collaborators with whom one does not necessarily always see eye to eye yeah. ever. Oh, not always, ever. Um, uh, well, yeah, when we were not last year, we are, we're, we're just thinking hypothetically, yeah. how could one, should one, find oneself in a situation where you're dealing with collaborators that you're maybe sometimes kind of maybe sort of not getting along with, or not seeing eye to eye. Yeah. Um, um, in this hypothetical, uh, could you more specific? <laughs> Like, 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 are you the right, uh, 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 would, would you be seeing yourself as the writer in this hypothetical, and, uh, or are you, you co-writing something? It could be, yeah, it's sort of, yeah, but it could be anything. It could be something that sure. you're both uh, directing or acting in, or um, any manner of things, creative endeavors. But if, yeah. sort of, if you, because it's, a good collaboration in which we produce an awful lot of good material and I think that talking with each other makes this final product that we produce stronger. Right. But it right. does involve an awful lot of just sort of d d doing that and right. there's only so much of that you can do before you want to see a divorce lawyer. Right. Well hmm. that thing I ask because if you're writing something with someone the, it's it's different than if you're say acting in a play with someone because you have you know in a play you have your you know your go-to person your director for example that you can have a conversation with someone outside the actual head buddy thing you know yeah. um, but if you're writing something it's a little different because it's just you guys you know in a room together you know um, or the two of you in a room together um, I would you know it's funny I don't uh, often write things with people. But I just, I would just suggest, if it's a good collaboration and you want to stick with it and continue, then you have to find ways. And if you're committed to finding ways to having it work out, then ways will appear. You see, you see, if you're not, if you're thinking this is the last, you know, I do not want to work with this person anymore, then you should just cut the cord. You know. But if you really think, no, 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 this is a good collaboration, as you've said, then just go into each meeting. Um, thinking this is a good collaboration and a lot of this stuff comes out of this relationship. Yeah. You know what I mean? Frame it in that way and you will see more good come out of it than headbutting. Yeah. If you're going, oh no, here we go again, we're going to be headbutting. You know what I mean? I guarantee you're going to be headbutting a lot. Yeah. So it's really how you frame it. Like most things, you know, you know, like most things, right? It's, it's how you frame it um, that's going to, uh, for the most part, Sort of dictate what kind of experience you're gonna have, you know. So yeah, it's a good question. Though. It's a good question. This is a good answer. We can apply that to pretty much anything. Certainly anything in the creative world. Right? It's time to provide. Oh, please, 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 please. Okay, um, well, I'm an actress, but oftentimes I do things without a director being there. So a lot of devised pieces. Uh, and one way that it happens um, because we're riding along while doing this is just like okay we are at odds at this moment but let's try it our way let's try it my way let's see how it kind of flows with the rest of the piece or if we have a goal how does that contribute to the goal like would that get us any closer um, and then you know if one of those two sticks out or okay I really enjoyed this about you know what we did about with your idea I really enjoyed this about what we did with my idea um, kind of extracting those positives and then, you know, molding something with that. Yeah. I don't know if that helped. I'm sorry. No, it's very helpful. That's why we ask the question to the group and people don't whisper in my ear. <laughs> no, it's a great, it's a great, you know, sure, sure. Um, and again, you're, you're committed to, you're committed to the relationship working. Yeah, absolutely. So you should, but you're, you're finding ways to, to have it be successful. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Very good, good idea, very good. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm stuck on two things with the play that I'm currently writing. Um, so it is about 
lynching and it started with <laughs> it started um, with a few articles that I read that happened in um, the later 1800s um, and so dealing with the historical knowledge and the facts that I have about that versus um, the love that I have for the music that came out more towards like the 1930s, the 1940s, the 1950s. And so I'm using a lot of that music and I'm interweaving it um, throughout this piece. But now I got to the point where I'm, I'm still towards the beginning of trying to figure out which one am I going to stay more faithful to, to the music or to these other things. Because it's not like those problems ever went away. It's not like, you know, lynching has stopped by the time, you know, a lot of, you know, strange fruit, um, you know, has come out and things like that. So it's really, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I think I need some guiding questions on how to figure out which one to go with, which one to be more faithful to. Guiding questions? I don't know. Just Ask anything, them. anything. Say them. Which ones do you want to be more faithful to? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think you do. My theory is we all know our plays better than anybody else. So this is a space where I'm going to tell you that you know. So you're, you, you, it sounds like you're creating either or, which doesn't sound faithful to your original idea to use both. Okay. So your original idea says use both. Use this historical information that you've been reading about and this music that you love. And why do you suddenly feel the need to use one or the other? I don't understand. Uh, this Statistics. Uh, when I started writing, the statistics were very much so from um, 1886 in Tennessee. Uh, so it was, yeah, that's where it started from. Then the music evolved from there. So then the music came in. I don't understand though why you ever had a point where you are saying to yourself you need to choose one or the other. Because the numbers don't match. So like 728. Um, lynchings happened within you know this time period in 1886 versus if I were to use the music from 1940s because I'm also implementing radio so it would have to be you know kind of true to that then I would have to get these updated statistics which is a little less dramatic as opposed to these 786 statistics. You mean, no, I really don't understand. You, mean okay. you, you, you would need a someone saying on the radio that someone was lynched? I, I still Yeah, that's, that's kind of the way that it's set up. Mm -hmm. So um, through these radio excerpts, it gives out information um, about uh, factual things that have happened through the articles that I've read. Right. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so I still don't see the problem. Because, <laughs> no, no, because yeah. there's a, I mean, one, it's a play, right? right? So it's a work of, it's a fiction, mm -hmm. it's a story that you're telling that pulls from history. Mm -hmm. It's not an historical article, correct? Correct. Okay, so you are, you have your, in somewhere in your bag, you have your poetic license, right? So you're allowed to create. Uh, and then just, you know, right? Okay, okay great. So you're allowed, and plus, do you think they actually reported the lynchings on the radio? How many lynchings were actually reported on the radio? Oh, no, that's probably not. That's fictionalized. Well, gee, why are you even doing it at all? Right, right. Okay, great. So, so you decided to do this, <laughs> mm -hmm. to have these lynchings reported on the radio, an event that probably maybe never happened, ever, maybe. Let's just say, let's just be extreme. Mm -hmm. Great. So you do whatever you want. And see what happens. Have you written the whole thing to the end? No. Okay, great. So, right. So you're having one of those things like you get started. What's your name? Felicia. Felicia. Yeah. So Felicia's having one of those things where she gets started and she writes how many pages? Oh, I don't even know. Yeah, we need to look that up. Uh, about 15. 15 pages yeah. and something in her head says, oh, come on, girl, you got it. Yeah. Look, look, look. Yeah, right. Okay, so that is a variation of everything that everybody who's ever written anything, probably, has had in their head. Some people, they hear the voice that says, Oh, come on, man, what, are you, what is your mother going to think? Or, oh, come on, girl, no one's going to produce that. Or, I don't know, that doesn't make any sense, no one's going to understand it. It's a version of that, it's a version of doubt. It's a very, it's a, right? It's one of the many voices of doubt or fear or concern or worry. So, continue. <laughs> right. 
just continue to go forward, get to the end, see what you got. It's okay that if, if you're creating a, a, a thing where they're talking about lynching on the radio, that's already outside of the, you know, of the realm of what really happened. So you've already broken the mold, so just continue. Okay? Yeah. And then you'll see what you have, and then you'll see if it actually plays and holds together. And that's the basic question, does it hold together? Mm -hmm. Not is it historically accurate, unless you're an historian who's writing and, uh, something for some history magazine or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what history magazines are are. <laughs> Molly knows this, you know. The history magazine, sure. Or the history, ch the history channel isn't even... They don't show history anymore. It's all about aliens. <laughs> it's all about aliens. It's, it's all about the Illuminati. Yeah, like... somebody faced off against like Ben Franklin and some guy. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> You know, so that's the thing. We always have in our head that thing, that, mm -hmm. a version of that. And so the next thing you write, it's going to be something else. Mm -hmm. You're going to have another voice that's so going to say something. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you write, it's going to be you and I have another voice that says something else. I mean, we, it, it's, it's a version of that voice that says, stop, don't do this. Do something else. Or shouldn't you read more? Shouldn't you read more up on the facts? Shouldn't you whatever, mm -hmm. right? What do you mean, Molly? Yeah. Well, so I've been writing a play for like two years now. Yes. I've done a version of it before. Oh. I keep kind of evolving oh. it and having it change. But I find myself, every time I go back to it a few months later, I throw a lot out. And that just kind of, I, you know, it changed. And I'm like, I hate that. And I, and I change it all over again. And I love the play. And I don't want to throw the play out. But right. I, I find myself always changing it every few months. Right. And it's, Ever right. Well, yes, that's really good. So Molly's written a play that she loves, and every time she looks at it, she does a rewrite yeah. and throws stuff out and, and puts in new stuff. But you love the you love the play, right? That's good. That's good. Um, is there something that you would like to begin working on? Something else. Besides. Yes, something else. No, I, I want to finish this, but I don't know what finishing means. Right. Finishing means let it go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a famous playwright, and I won't mention his name, because you probably all know him, or at least have heard of him, and he said just the other day in my presence, you know there are like at least like four or five versions of oh, wow, that famous play um, out there, published. I, every time I say it, I just change it, I change it, and I change it, and I'm like, oh, I don't have that problem. I just, I, I, because there's something else I want to work on, instead of reworking that thing over and over again, I can think of lovely way, and I'm a better writer now than I was 20 years ago, but to go back and rework, I mean, I'd never get the next thing done. So it's a choice that you make. So, my feeling is if you're asking if you're done, just, you probably are, and you're trying to go and make it perfect. Perfect is the enemy of done. Because it will never be perfect, I'll tell you now. It will never be perfect. But it will be good enough. And good enough is pretty fine. Okay? Just let, let it go. And what you want to do is you want to take your skill that you've learned in writing this wonderful play and you want to apply it to the next one. Because that you have a, a voice, your voice is a version of Felicia's voice. You're not done yet. Come on. You need to do a rewrite. That's, that's what you got. That's your thing, right? And your next play, you'll have something else, another voice. But it's, and it's okay. We all have these voices. You just have to recognize it for what it is. You're done. Boom. Even when it gets, I mean, and this is what I'm talking about, the, the play is published. It won lots of prizes. <laughs> he back there, we back there. It's okay. You know, and I don't know, I'm not commenting on his process, but I would guess from what you're telling me that you're trying to make it perfect. And instead of making it perfect, just make it a, a, a new play. Yeah, let it go. It is, it, you're probably done. I'm just guessing. I mean, you love it. You love it, and it's going well. Yeah. Write the next thing. You can always go back. I mean, really, write the next thing, and you can always go back, and you really need to go back if you're in production, and a lovely, gorgeous, ginormous production, a fabulous theater. You're going to be working on it then, right? Okay, so think that you're done. You're done for now. Tell 
what, what is it that makes it hard to let it go? Um, I think it's that I find, I think it also might just be a product of who I am right now. If I feel like I change every month, so I feel like <laughs> my perspective on the play changes every month, right you now. And identifying my voice within it is right. ever right. Right. And what I thought was, and I also think like where, where you are and who you're writing to, and you know, it's, it's it's a you know funny play, and a lot of it is like you know right. you're aiming your jokes at it, who you're trying to speak to, who you're right. trying to. Right. And as I change, and as my thoughts change on who I'm writing to, I think that I just kind of keep shifting my my thoughts uh -huh. on these people who I'm talking about and what they're doing. Let it go. I'm serious. No, I'm really serious. Let it go. It's time. To, it's time to let it go, and 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 just move on to the next one. Really, write the next one. It's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's a, like, pat yourself on the back. You finish the play. Yay. And you love it. Yeah. But I know. It's like, oh, wow. That's, a, that's such a beautiful problem to have. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I work, 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 and then move on. So, I don't know. Did you grow up in one place? Mm -hmm. Ah, that's interesting. Like, where? Philadelphia, like your family still lives there? It's interesting. It's just an interesting, you know, maybe that has something to do with it. Not Philadelphia, but just, you know, you, you have one thing, you know, you're, you're responsive and responsible to people that you've known for a while. You know, you're allowed to let go. We won't sing that song, but you know it. <laughs> You know that song. Anybody else have an answer to this question? Come on. Hey. Um, so sometimes I feel like in my work, the middle tends to sag. Yeah. There's like a little sag in the middle. Yes. Where it's like the protagonist is doing something. Right. But then it's, it just feels like it's one person kind of, yeah, yeah. Just like kidding, I'm, I'm in your play. Yeah, yeah, no, that's literally what happens. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the protagonist is doing something at the beginning. It's like nice and strong. Yeah. Ah, we know yeah. what we want. We and then the want. ending's really strong. Right. And like when I'm rewriting, like it just feels like it's this kind of like, not a mess, but like this, it, everything kind of gets a little too right. modeled. Right. And, right. and right. I don't know if it has to do with yeah. the protagonist being active enough or it's that the other characters in the play aren't. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Shabon, did you all hear Shabon? She has, she has a nice strong beginning in her plays, nice strong ending, and in the middle it gets a little mushy, mushy, yeah. mushy, mushy. Yeah. Um, it's probably both. It's probably both. It's probably your protagonist, your main character, um, losing her or his way a little bit, and it's probably your other characters not doing their job. Oh. Me, because remember we talked about this. It's, uh, it's in a play and in a novel too. And, uh, you know, it's like. You know, focus on what do the characters want? What do they want? All of them, not just the, the main person, you know? Yeah. But what does she what does he want in the scene? What does he want in that speech right there? What's he trying to do? Even the people who are in the you know chorus, you know, in the background, the people in the foreground, they all it so it's made strong because they're all trying to get something all the time. Even the minor characters, in court, you know? Yeah. Even the smaller characters, the, the characters with not as many lines. And that's what kind of, you know, that's what holds it up. You think of, you know, you, I'm sure you've seen, heard the analogy, the, the, the metaphor, whatever it is, analogy, metaphor, oh, yeah. something hanging on a clothesline, right? Oh, okay, good. Something, so you think of a sheet, you've hung clothes, a lot of people haven't done this. Maybe in Philadelphia, they do this in Philadelphia. Um, they do the, you know, how many of you have clothes on a line? If you've seen a movie where there have been clothes hanging on the line, in Wizard of Oz, I think there are clothes hanging on the line. The wind comes and whips them. Anyway, um, clothes pins, you know, we you know where clothes pins are. I'm from Texas. There are lots of clothes hanging on the line. Clothes pins at the beginning, right? And you have to have those clothes pins along the way. Right? And if you don't have enough clothes pins along the way, you get that saggy, 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 especially when the clothes are wet. There's a lot of sagging going on. So those clothes pins are, what does my character want? What are they doing? And it seems, it sounds really paint by numbery, and it might feel that way as you're writing along, but you can always make it better after you've gotten sort of the basic 
This is what she wants in this scene. Here's where she goes. Because, you know, again, we're starting on a road trip. We're going to go to California and end up on Santa Monica Pier. You're getting mushy around Chicago. Why? I don't know. Because I'm like, eh. yeah. You know, right? You're in, the, you're in the flyover, bitch. You're getting a little mushy. So where are you going? Chicago. Then where? I don't know what state is next, but only in the end, can't go there. <laughs> What's next? You know what I mean? I don't know how we get around, but we have to go down into Kentucky to get around. Oh, they just lost. Poor Kentucky. Well, you know, we're going to get there. Yeah. Um, the close ones, you know. Yeah. Kentucky lost, didn't they? No. They're supposed to win everything. And in the end, what do they do? Uh, they're losers. Yeah. Losers. And not the state, just that one person. He'll get better. Yeah. He's like putting his foot in his mouth. Anybody else? So does that help? Does that help? Yeah. So it's a little bit. And, if it, and sometimes these things, they feel like, you know, like, oh my god, I'm not like writing because it's not like slowly and it doesn't feel like magical. It feels like stupid and kind of <laughs> like that. But not to worry because you can, you can smooth it out later on. Asking yourself those really boring questions, what does my character want right now? If you don't know, then, you know, it might be a little soft. Unless you want it to be soft, and that's different. It's a whole different thing. Good question, John. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. So, you're writing something that isn't necessarily nonfiction. Okay. And you're writing characters that suddenly seem maybe too close to real people. Um, maybe not close, but people that you know. People that you know, yeah. yeah. Is that problematic to try to move away from that? Yeah. Um, and it's still Yeah. What's your name? I'm Rob. Have you been? You've been here. Uh, it's been you, a while. You look familiar. Yeah. Maybe yeah. 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 you're futurist. Yes, that's right. Hi, Rob. So you're. So so what you're writing something and there are people it, it feels like people that you know yeah like it seems like the characters are very close to home to people that are actually in your life I mean, right you know right 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 well that's what they say yeah i don't know i'm not sure what that means actually yeah, yeah. so but then then if you have people that characters that are very strongly identifiable as somebody Right. Right. That's real, even though it's Right. So, uh, and these are people who would sort of like cry if they perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Yeah. or go like, "Oh, that's me!" Like that. Yeah. yeah. Horrible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you do? Oh, yeah. um, is, it, is that a bad thing? Um, uh, it depends. It depends. Like what that voice in your head said. You know, that voice again. Yeah. So your voice is going, "Oh man, I don't know. Do you really think you want to write about people like that? Who are going to recognize themselves in your play?" Like that. And you have to make that decision. And um, people are always, or usually always, going to go to your stuff, read your novels, whatever, and go, that's just like me. And you're like, <laughs> but they're going to go, because when I did that thing, remember, you remember, it was, that's, that's me, right? So you're going to have that. Um, I would say, unless someone's gonna, you know, like, shoot you to death for writing something that kind of looks like them, I'd say not to sweat it. Because it sounds like it's coming out of you, and make sure the name is, like, not theirs. Maybe make them from another city. You know, try to do little cosmetic things, you know, to make it like, that ain't you, that's... Somebody, and then create a whole fiction. That's not you, that's somebody that I met in Borneo when I was down there. Man, why do you think it's you? I think you're okay. Just wipe away your tracks, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's okay. And, and you know, if you know you're saying something mean about somebody that you should, you know, you, you have judgment. Yeah. And if somebody comes up to you after a play and slaps you. It's a good play. Uh, <laughs> good play. <laughs> Yeah, you can look at it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question. I like that. Anybody else? Yes. Um, I'm wondering if you write about your own 
narrator? Uh huh. Okay. Venus has the new resurrectionist. He's a great reader. He's the guy who does it up. 
So he's a side, he's a guy kind of on the sidelines, but he has a he has a role in the show. And that's a, a, a kind of a, a narrator person. Um, so does that does that make sense? They have a they have a hand. There's some skin in the game, one could say. That's all your characters should have. I think. Anybody else?